Hi everyone, this is Joseph at Lightspeed. Sometimes if we've prepared items as matrices in retail, we will want to report on them in line with items that are not prepared as matrices. So this way, regardless of what color or size of an item sold, we'll be able to measure the entire style as one unit. This is something that we can do with custom dimensions. It's not that hard, so let's take a look together. So, there are a few different steps to preparing a matrix or item analysis. First, we'll begin with a simple sales report. Second, we'll add the dimensions of the item description and of the item matrix. Third, we'll be using a calculation called is null to define whether the matrix is identified or not. Fourth, we'll be using an if statement to return a value if is null is defined as yes. Fifth, we'll remove the initial dimensions of description or matrix so that we can report on each just as one line. So as step one, we'll begin with a simple sales report. So let's begin with recent sales. Recent sales gives us daily sales totals for this week, but we're going to change the dimensions on this report. Step two, we want to add the dimensions of description and matrix. So I can find the dimensions of description and of matrix under the item dimensions and measures. Here we see the description. We'll click on it to add it to the report. And we can find the matrix under this section here. I'll click on it and add it to the report as well. Now we don't actually need the completed date on this report. So I'm going to click on the gear icon and we'll remove it. Let's run the report. So now we see both the item and the matrix. If the matrix field is null, this means that this product is not prepared as a matrix. But we see that some of these matrix results are not null. This means that these items are considered a matrix. So far so good. The next step we'll be using is a simple calculation, is null. Is null is a calculation we use to determine whether or not a field has content in it or not. We're going to check to see if the matrix field has content in it by using this is null function. To apply it, I'm going to go to the custom fields and we'll add a new custom dimension. So I'll add the function is null. I see it here. And we want to check to see if the matrix is null. So I'm going to start typing the word matrix and we'll see a few options here. It's not matrix ID or matrix tag that we want, it's the matrix itself. So I'm going to click on that. Let's give this a meaningful title, such as null matrix. We'll save and we'll run. So we'll see now if the matrix field is empty, our formula will return the word yes. If the matrix field is not empty, though, our formula will return the word no. So we're making progress on our report. So our next step will be to take that is null function and use it in an if statement. To illustrate, I'm going to click on the gear icon next to null matrix, and I'm going to choose duplicate. This will just make a copy of our initial formula. I'm going to click on the gear icon for our copy, and we'll edit. So what we want to do now is take this is null function and use it as a logical test in an if statement. This is how it works. Before the is null now, I'm going to add the command if in an open bracket. And we'll begin with a logical test. We'll say if is null equals, and then just the word guess, followed by a comma. This way, we're starting a command for analytics to test whether or not the matrix is null. The next argument we make will be the positive. If the matrix description is null, what we want to return is the item description. So I'm going to start typing the word description. And we see it here. I'll click on it. Next, we'll add a comma. 
and we need to complete our argument with the results if not true. If the item description is not null, what we want to do then is return the matrix. So I'm going to start typing the word matrix, and we see it here. Finally, we complete our if statement with a closing bracket. Let's also give this a more meaningful title. We'll call this matrix or item. We'll save and we'll run. Great. So now we get the results here of matrix or item. Let's test it out. These items at the top here have null matrices. So what's being returned is their description. These items on lines 3 and 4 here do not have null matrices. So what's being returned here is the matrix, not their description. So our custom dimension is working. Our final step on this report will be to remove the initial dimensions. This is how we don't break apart the matrices by item, but will rather be gathering everything together. As always, to remove dimensions from the report, all we need to do is hover over the dimension and click on its gear icon. We'll remove the description. We'll remove the matrix. We can even remove the null matrix. And then we'll finally run the report just as a function of the matrix or item. So now our items are gathered together if they are matrices, but they're still visible if they are standalone items. Now, a way that we could test this is go back to our matrix or item formula. We can make a copy of it, but we'll change the rules a little bit. If the item matrix is null, then what we could do is return the label between quotation marks of description. If it is not null, we could return the label between quotation marks of matrix. And let's improve the title a little bit. We'll save and we'll run. This way it's clear to us now which items are standalone and which items are matrices. So, there are a few next steps that you can take to get even more out of this formula. First of all, you can use the identical formula on inventory reports too. Secondly, we could add a custom measure list to explore the items within the matrices. This way we could see their SKUs, their colors or their sizes, or more details about what variants we're including in our report. So thank you for watching this video about preparing matrices and items together. Remember, you can find more resources here in our Video Help Center and in the Analytics section on Community.